Hello everybody and welcome back to the Ultimate Fashion History with me, Amanda Halley. And the June 2020 episode of What We're Into, our little monthly video magazine of everything that's delighting us, inspiring us or obsessing us in any given month. Before I start, just to remind you that I don't do comments here, but if you'd like to make one, head over to the Ultimate Fashion History Facebook group. We've got over 7,000 members there now, and they are all fantastic. It's like a night at the Coconut Grove over there. What style? Alternatively... You can contact me directly through my website, amandahalley.com, which brings me to the first thing I'm into this month. My new website. It was one of my COVID projects. My old website was starting to look a little bit tired, so I redesigned it. And thank you again tomorrow for the fabulous Amanda emoji. I'm using it constantly. And the website was all put together for me by my very good friend, Pierre Halley. Yes, we have the same name because he was my former husband, but we spell our names differently, but that's another story. Anyway, the new website is so much cleaner and simpler with just a little bio, contact links, links to the UFH on Facebook, to my LinkedIn, and best of all, it links directly to me here on YouTube. And speaking of Pierre Halle, Sure, he knows how to put together a website, but his real job is as an artist, and I have always been into his artwork. He's the real deal, a graduate of St. Martin's in London, and I've always thought he was brilliant, and as well as working in this sort of postmodern mode, he's increasingly interested in portraiture, which he can do from a photograph, evidently. I really love his portraits. I think they are so expressive. And they kind of remind me of British portraiture from the first half of the 20th century. Do you know what I mean? I'll leave Pierre's website and contact details in the description in case you'd like your portrait done. He's very reasonable too. All right, let's look at some fashion. Journey with me to beautiful Mozambique so I can introduce you to a label called Afro Ricky which is best described as a fusion between traditional African culture and contemporary fashion. And the designer behind it all is the elegant Rekansia Ajira, who I met through the ultimate fashion history. And one of the many things that's so, so amazing about Afro Ricky is that everything, absolutely everything, is created by Rekansia and her team. And when I say everything, I mean everything. All of the textiles, all of the dyes are made by hand. The dyes are from natural pigments, which I think are sourced locally, at least most of them are. Sustainability is at the heart of Rakansia's fashion vision. And just look at some of Afro Ricky's collection here. So vibrant, so alive, everything unique, but united with Rakansia signature patterns and motifs. And there's some terrific menswear there too. And look at this tailoring. Look at that funneled collar with a scarf drawn through. And because Rakansia is so up to the moment with everything she does, of course, Afro Ricky has a line of absolutely beautiful COVID masks. Do check out her website. And if you're in Mozambique, check out her signature store. What else are we into? I'm so into this boot. It was recently discovered in the Altai Mountains of Siberia, and it is 2,300 years old and perfectly preserved in the ice. It actually looks like something Rakansia might have designed, doesn't it? How beautiful is this? Not only beautiful, but there's something intrinsically cool about it. Do you know what I mean? I'll tell you what else is cool. The trend that's going around of people turning retro television sets from the 50s or 60s into beds for cats. Ultimate fashion history friend Eric turned me on to this fabulously ludicrous idea. And I think it's magnificent, especially if you have a mid-century home. I want two of these, one for Louis and one for Beau. Speaking of TV, I want to tell you about two newish music documentaries that I saw this month that I absolutely loved. 
The first was called Echoes of the World, and it's about the seminal 1960s album The Village Green Preservation Society by The Kinks, which I always think is the quintessential musical accompaniment to the late 60s Victorian and Edwardian revival, even more so than Sgt. Pepper, I would argue. And the second documentary I saw... It's called This Is Pop, and it's about one of my other favorite bands, XTC. What a fun and joyous journey it was. And if you know Andy Partridge, who features enormously in the documentary, you can imagine how many giggles are to be found here. Both of these docus are hard to find, but if you're interested in seeing either of them, drop me a note and I will head you in the right direction. What else are we into? Ah, oh, this month my beautiful blue-eyed sister Nicole scanned and sent to me via Dropbox about 2,000 old family photos, some of which I hadn't seen in years, and some of which I'd never seen at all. Oh my goodness, what a hilarious journey through fashion history. Let me share some of my faves. Here are my sisters in the very early 70s, forced to embody, yes, embody, that storybook railway children Edwardian revival look. And here's my mum on her wedding day in 1964. What a beautiful dress with matching jacket, but check out that hairpiece. Here's my dad as a very young man, channeling his inner, maybe not so inner, beatnik. And NASA, we have a problem. Here is my mother in a silver metallic paper mini dress. Let me zoom in so you can see. This is at the height of the space craze of the mid-1960s because nothing says space age like potato salad. Here are my English grandparents in the late 1930s, looking like they've thrown a body off that pier. Here's mum in about 1975 on the turret of her castle. And no, of course, we didn't live in a castle, but she sure as hell acted like she did. And from the mid-1990s, could my brother Zach be any more like Matthew Perry in this shirt with tiny collar and splayed tie with tiny knot? And some of these photographs just speak so directly to very specific moments in fashion and cultural history. Here's mum in a backless keyhole gown from about 1970-71 that just screams the deco revival. And here are both of my older sisters, Lynette and Nicole, in about 1964-65 in their little mini dresses with big cartoon flowers reading a Beatles magazine. And look at their little faces as they look at the Fab Four. And here's me in the 1980s, when the 80s did the 60s, although God only knows what I'm doing here. And there were some real oddities in this incredible cache of photographs. Like this one, the young girl whose face is circled in red is my mum, featuring in what looks like a very big, very 30s production number on a stage somewhere in England. I have no idea what this is all about, but it was before she joined the circus, so she can't have been any older than 15. And another favourite oddity is this one. Nicole on the left with my mother on the right. Very late 80s or very early 90s, I would guess. And they seem to be with a chubby Roger Moore. What was going on here? Oh my God, oh my family. Anyway, I have a biological family, but I also have the family of the ultimate fashion history. So let me tell you about the next thing I'm into this month. Costume designer John Hintergaard, who is a wonderful and active member of the Ultimate Fashion History Facebook group, as well as being a fabulous designer, has just started his own YouTube channel. It's called John Feld, and he discusses costumes, costumes, designers and movie icons in only the way that a costume designer could. I am obsessed with it. I'll leave you the link to John's channel and let me tell you, if you like the UFH, you will love this channel, so do subscribe. I'm obsessed with it. What else am I into? Well, even though lockdown restrictions are slowly but surely being lifted and my ridiculous sunburn is testimony to this, 
Many of us are still required to do Zoom meetings, right? So get this. Interior designer Jonathan Adler, one of my favorites, has created Zoom backgrounds that you can use during Zoom meetings if you know how to work their green screen feature. Aren't they glorious? So you can sit in front of a Jonathan Adler mantelpiece and all of your colleagues will wonder why you're getting paid so much more than they are. What great fun, typical Adler. You can download his backgrounds with instructions on his website. I'll leave the link. What else are we into? I am so into this hotel that's opened in Thailand where you sleep under the stars in these pods that they're calling jungle bubbles. They're very elegant, aren't they? But this is the best thing. You get to sleep among protected elephants. This is indescribably lovely, isn't it? Speaking of lovely, this month I discovered a new artist who is absolutely rocking this gal's world. He's called Rob Liana and he paints buildings. In fact, his website is called paintedbuildings.com and I spent about two hours the other day on his website and I absolutely adore his work. There's something about it that sort of reminds me of architectural paintings from the 1940s. Can you see what I mean when I say that? He does exteriors and interiors and I believe that if you send him some photos of your own house, he can transform them into one of his beautiful paintings. I also love the way that he renders trees and sky and foliage and sometimes, and I'm guessing just for fun, Mr. Liana puts his talents to the ancient world. How beautiful is this? I feel like I'm in ancient Greece. And speaking of the ancient world, I'm sure this next thing came up on your newsfeed too. An ancient Egyptian priest called Neseyamun was given his voice back. This is his sarcophagus, and of course his mummy was within, and scientists scanned the mummy taking measurements and created a new voice box and larynx for him using a 3D printer. Then with an electronic voice box, they reproduced the voice he would have had. He only makes one noise and I've got to be honest, it sounds kind of whiny, but hey, if I'd been in a sarcophagus for 3000 years, I'd be whining too. But really how incredible to hear a voice even a slightly whiny one from 3,000 years ago. So cool. What else are we into? Well, I cannot wait to come up and see this new project. HBO have just announced that they're making a biop of the later years of the fabulous Mae West. And who is going to play her? Talk about dream casting. Bette Midler. I just think she is the perfect choice, don't you? Bet was made to play Mae West. Surely I can't wait for this project. What else are we into? I'm really into the new video from K-pop girl band Blackpink. The song's called How You Like That and it's fun, but the fashion. It has so much great fashion in it. It's so runway, so 2020. You'll love it. What else are we into? Hello, Ian Fleming, and for Father's Day, I bought Rupert this book, Shaken, Drinking with James Bond and Ian Fleming. It's official, meaning it's published by the Fleming estate, and it is so much fun. Some of the recipes come from the actual James Bond novels, but some are inspired by the novels, like The Breakfast Royale, The Money Penny, and the Golden Eye. It's also full of interesting facts about 007, as well as everything that Ian Fleming had to say on the subject of booze. And speaking of booze, it's time for the food of the month, the cocktail of the month, and the designer of the month. For the food of the month, travel with me to Tasty Tuscany for some tempting treats. I've just discovered this chicken dish. It's called Creamy Tuscan Garlic Chicken, and I found it on a terrific website called RecipeCritic.com. I'll leave the link. It's all 
chicken creamy garlicky goodness with wilted spinach and sun-dried tomatoes the ultimate comfort food it also works for keto people which i'm not doing anymore by the way i don't do keto anymore i'm doing intermittent fasting now anyway i'll leave the link to the recipe in the description and because i'm not keto anymore i served it up with tuscan lemon and rosemary roast potatoes a recipe i got from ina garden again i'll leave the link i served it all up with a loose leaf italian salad and washed it down with modella massi merlot but any italian wine would do red or white i reckon it was so tasty and fragrant and reminded me of when i used to have to schlep around florence in my trend forecasting days and for the cocktail of the month the mighty nightmare and it's from the shaken book it is so fresh and so summery but here's the thing it calls for a basil liqueur called basilica which of course i could not get my hands on so instead of whining about it like a priest from ancient egypt i made my own yes from scratch here it is halfway through the fermenting process it was so easy to make and the results were sublime i'm going to get into making my own liqueurs now like monks do and the designer of the month the king of the king's road ossie clark was a tune baby and let's just remind ourselves why we love the beautiful bias cuts of this romantic chappy and of course i discuss ossie's work life and unfortunately death in an episode in the series UFH Noir. I'll leave the link in case you didn't catch it. Well, that was June. I wonder what I'll be into in July. Who knows? I'll let you know next month. And in the meantime, I'll be back with more fashion history episodes here on the UFH. So don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Join our Facebook group. It's so friendly and so much fun. And as always, thanks ever so much for watching. And my love to you all. Happy start of summer. Bye for now.